Welcome everybody to Spirit Lake, Iowa. Tom and Brett here for the Matuska Daxtermy Supply Company Thursday afternoon Facebook Live. And uh, if you joined us last week, we, you were on vacation. I was. I was on vacation trying to shovel out the shovel snow. Shovel um, The snow's over, spring's coming. Uh, we talked about abandoning the weather report like we seem to have every beginning of every show. and. Uh, Brett said, oh, we better keep it up because I missed last week because of snowstorm. Um, the big snows are over. Ew. No more in March. We always seem to have it during March Madness. Um, spring's coming. Uh, open water the lakes are soon, within soon. a couple weeks, going to be starting to turn dark. And uh, the ice will go and the big pike are starting to spawn soon. Very soon. Very, very soon. It's time to be out there. And your musky season's closed. Anyway, uh, anyway, it's coming, and we're yes. we're ready for it. It's been kind of a, a long winter. Um, last week, I talked to you. Uh, I had to do it all by myself. Talked to you about lacquer paints, and uh, it seems like taxidermists these days have two choices: they have acrylic paint or they have lacquer paint. And some of you creative people have probably come up with other things in between. Um, there's latex paints, and there's oil-based paints, and other methods of of coloring. Um, fish and bird feet, pad pastels, there's all kinds of different methods. <clears throat> and you just have to try a lot of different things. Um, watch programs like ours and other people's and uh, see what works best for you. You know, Don't be afraid to step out on a limb and try something that nobody's even recommended. You know, it works really good. Uh, lots of YouTube videos out there. Um, we learn a lot on um, paint with lacquers. Uh, um, Creatax, things like that. There's lots of talented, talented people. And if you can uh, sit through a YouTube tutorial or video and learn one or two things, it's very, very helpful. Tons, tons out there. Tons available. And last week was uh, lacquer. We didn't feel it was fair just to talk about acrylics and not get lacquer. It's fair share because uh, we have actually painted with lacquer for you not as long as me, years. but 20 to 40 years. And I uh, had a lot of experience with lacquer, and it's done a great job for us over the years. Um, today, we're going to talk about pedestal rod attachments. And we always talk about how many hats a taxidermist have to wear. Um, you have to be up. You have to be um, a zoologist. You have, to, you have to be a trapper or deal with furs, um, a skinner. Um, you have to know anatomy. You have to be a carpenter. You have to be, like you said, a tanner um, and a painter, um, a hairstylist. Um, this list can go on and on and on because quality taxidermy work does not just come together. It takes somebody um, who knows something about hair and hair patterns and making hair, um, giving loft to hair and all kinds of and cleaning it. You almost have to be a beautician, um, he's a seamstress, a seamstress. seamstress. you have to be a good seamstress, a beautician's going to show. This could go on and on and on um, all afternoon long because you really do have to perfect a lot of traits. And one of the things um, we think we are, are engineers. Yep. And you have to be able to, especially um, a lot of mounts, you just put a hanger on the wall or a hanger on the back of them hang them on the wall and you're good to go. Yeah. Many times that person that has his whole wall covered up with deer heads comes in and he says, I want something different. I want one of the newfangled pedestals I've been seeing so much about. Well, actually it's not a new concept, but the way we do them, we, we evolve in different manners over and over and over. <clears throat> so you have to come up with some kind of attachment to connect whatever specimen you are, have, whether it's a deer or a snowshoe rabbit running on yeah. one foot or a caribou or whatever it happens to be, you have to come up with some method to attach that creature to the base really nice and stable so when somebody slams the door, it doesn't look like he's running for the corner. Um, so that's very, very important to um, stability, something easy, you have to have something so when the customer um, goes home and puts his animal on its base, yeah. he can do it by himself. It's got to be yeah. user friendly. Um, if he ever wants to take it off and, and move something, he can do it himself. Yeah, 
And that's a big part of it is being able to take some of these apart because they get pretty elaborate. Oh, we've had some huge, huge pieces that people come in and they look and they say, how are you going to get it out of the room? <laughs> well, we, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a plan for that. And uh, most of the time they come, come apart. Um, big antlers on, uh, this is the same thing, speaking of attachments and pedestal attachments, which we're going to get into, uh, big antlers are the same thing. Mm -hmm. We treat oh, our yeah. antlers, yep. moose and elk and, and big caribou that won't go through a door, they have to be able to slide, horn slide on and off. Yep. Or some people have the entire, the horns stationary, but they do come on and off the animal yep. too. We even thought we might have to take the tail off the crocodile. Remember and, that? We and talked I bet about that's that done. for a and long I time. Think you've had some experience with elephant oh, pieces, yeah, pieces and ears and that go on yep. after. Yep. Ears yep. and yep. trunks. And, yep. Yep. Good. All that stuff comes apart. Um, well, we'll show you a few ideas. Now, um, we have done a lot of different things over the years. We've done a lot of things really, really, really cool. And we've done a lot of things that didn't go so cool. <laughs> um, and you learn from, you learn from you do. Yeah. your mistakes or the ones that aren't yeah. quite as good as the other ones. Um, and we'll show you just a few of them that have worked really good um, for us over the years. And uh, now you take these ideas and apply them to what you're going to be doing. It might be um, a Cape Buffalo pedestal. It might be a caribou running on one leg. It might be a bluegill on a base. You know, yeah. there's lots of different choices. Some of them require a lot more thought and some of them not so mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Why don't you show them one of your favorites? I know this is. Oh, yeah. Um, this is probably one of the smaller ones. Um, light and delicate. I think you would have to choose your um, choose your attachment based on the need for stability and and what we have to hide. Um, this one works really well. It's a very small steel rod. I think it is three sixteenths. Probably this is probably a foot long. You can get this longer. Um, but the really nice part about that about this attachment is this brass sleeve fits this rod extremely tight. There is no movement in there. And so, and that's one of the things, not to get to stray a little bit for a second, but that's one of the first things we do when we judge our animals um, in shows that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. One of the first things I do is put my hand on the end of his nose and give him a little wiggle. And if he wiggles, that's probably okay. But if it's in the attachment, if you can feel it in the attachment, as far as I think the, the subject line is safe and secure attachment mm -hmm. to base. Um, and this, this particular attachment, if this were in the, in the fish and this were in the habitat and we put the two together, it's going to leave a really strong, safe attachment. Um, so that's one that we've used a lot. I think we've and that, that, that you can get in square, I think, and you can also get it in round. Yeah. But yep. the round, you got to be a little careful because your piece can spin. Yep. yep. Um, and we did round. Remember, we did round on the big northern. Mm -hmm. um, but to keep it from spinning. We did two. We did two. Yep. So that um, these attachments are great. You can use one point is really nice and delicate. But if you can hide it within the within your habitat, two is probably even stronger. And many of our um, attachments that we go with are um, um, square, mm -hmm. so they don't turn. So we kind of we like square. Like that. Yeah. And sometimes we will get pieces. You have to search for square tubing and and square rod. Yeah. And um, this is a nice, firm fit. Um, you can make that a little easier yet with just soft sandpaper, real fine sandpaper, oil. or oil. A little oil, um, yeah. You were oiling one a little bit earlier. Um, and I think you probably got a couple world championships with something similar, do same you not? Same thing, exact same thing. Yep. And, yep. and now when you, um, well, you could use this on a bird. You could use yeah. it on a fish. Um, you could use it on a mammal, not too big a mammal. We have different, yeah. different ideas for larger mammals, but a um, um, lot of different, yeah. you know, versions for this. You could use two. If two would be hard, you have to line them up carefully. Yeah. But uh, it would be possible to use two for something bigger. Um, but uh, square brass sleeve and a square stock works yeah. really well. Yeah, and, and it's inexpensive. This is not expensive stuff. No, and we carry we carry these two together. When the, if you order it 
Um, that'll save you a whole bunch of searching through different hardware stores and so forth. Um, these two pieces come right together and they are a really good fit. And again, that's about a foot long, I think. It's real easy if you have a large selection of square <laughs> stock and, and tube to, to rummage through and find, but if you have to go from store to store and store, it's oh, gonna take you a couple years to find yeah. something yeah. that you want. Um, this was an idea that um, we used the square stock for was um, this went into a styrofoam fish body yeah. or a reproduction um, and the square tube goes on to the, into the fish's head and that would slide in and out, in and out yeah. until you're ready to attach it permanently. And that works really nice for any, for any parts that you have to um, remove that you want to be able to remove and put back if you were doing inner mouth work or on the inside of the head it's just easier to be able to take that off and hold it in your hand. Um, once it's time for this to be attached permanently um, I would clean up that rod if it's been oiled and and maybe swab out the inside of the tube put a little bit of epoxy on it slide it on fix your seam it's on forever. But if we didn't do that we just put we can swap them out you can put a brown trout head on it or a small mouth head Oh on you it. wanted a rainbow here. <laughs> Take a seat. Um, and then along those lines, um, this is a, a larger, I, and it comes in, this must come in like smaller than quarter inch and quarter yeah. inch and three eighths of an inch and a half an inch and comes in a lot of different sizes. And this is nothing more than steel. Um, cold rolled steel, I think is the hardest and the firmest. But yeah. we used to do all of our, um, still do a lot of our big moose antler detached yeah. antlers with this and we never had sleeves to work from yeah. we would we would for instance bundle this up into the the pedicle of the moose and then we would wax this and buff it and wax it and buff it and we put on about 10 coats of wax and then we would fill the skull cap with our body putty put it in hold it until it's set and then Pull it off, and if you did it everything right, this slides off. The outer body putty hardens up real nice and firm. The whole moose antler will slide on and slide off. We have dozens and dozens and dozens of these out in people's showrooms. Yeah. Sandy would like to know: Does a square stock and tube list a weight limit? Oh, um, I'm not sure if he was talking about this one. Um, you're gonna have to know. You're going to have yeah. to say, hmm, I think this will work. Yeah, um, and that's going to depend a lot about on um, how far the cantilever is, too. If it were, if they were tight, I bet this would hold quite a bit of weight balance. straight up yeah, and down. Like you, yeah. Yep, but out <clears> over <throat> an angle, it may be a little bit weaker. So, um, I've never that's... seen anybody say uh, um, good for up 78 to... pounds or anything like that. I think you are going to have to... Consider your application, think about it, think about how much weight is if it's out, you know. I mean, yeah. if you have a, a big swan flying mm -hmm. and you want to slide it onto a base of some sort, um, I, this is pretty strong stuff, but I don't think you'd do it if you want something mm -hmm. heavy. So you're going to have to get some pieces and play with them yeah. and see what you think they're going to work. And, Sorry, but and these smaller ones are pretty inexpensive. So yeah. this is, this is something that's not a very good around. answer, but, <laughs> um, but we've done these, this square stock, it'll come in a steel finish and you can, mm -hmm. I guess if I'm going to use it for a pedestal, we would sand it really nice and smooth, polish mm -hmm. it. We got a little buffing wheel. We would polish any, any cut marks off of it or sanding scratches off of it. Um, and then wax it and buff yeah. it. And for those of you who aren't familiar with waxing and buffing, we use um, Johnson Johnson paste wax works good. Mm -hmm. We have a fiberglass wax that we use when we build molds, but the wax goes on creamy and somewhat soft and molten and then let it dry. Um, you can hit it with a hair dryer to get it to dry. Um, sometimes we'll put it out in the sun if it's summertime and it'll dry really good. And then you're gonna buff it off till you get a high shine. And the more coats you on, get on, the shinier it's going to get, and it will slip off and slip on yep. really, really easy. Yep. But that square stock, um, like I said, cold rolled steel, I think any of the people that are doing the really um, dramatic 
leaping um, leopard on top of a anyala or something like that, um, soft steel doesn't work. Make sure yes. uh, it's good steel. We did a, um, for instance, a project that went really, really bad. Um, you weren't born yet, but it was, <laughs> uh, at the time, it was the world's largest steer, and um, I had bought an ox form. Well, the steer gets really, really big, and the hide weighs a lot when it's wet, and the leg rods were actually bending, you know, bending oh, badly, sure. and uh, I had to cut him completely open, take the legs apart after he's nearly mounted, and put rebar up into his legs. So that yeah. that's an idea of um, what kind of strength you're going to need sometimes in some of these applications. Yeah. And we use a lot of this stuff. Um, that's nice stuff. That one comes with a sleeve. And it's called a pedestal um, rod, pedestal rod attachment, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And um, this is an aluminum sleeve, an epoxy core, and I think well, you could make these yourself if yeah. you had nothing to do with your time. Um, <laughs> I would say you take a threaded rod, you fill this full of epoxy, you slide it down in there, keeping it centered, and let it yeah. set up, and then cut the top off. Um, I wouldn't want to make one for every project, but it could be done. Uh, you just want to make sure whatever epoxy you use is an epoxy that can't, isn't going to bend and mm -hmm. one twist and fall apart. But this is uh, a really nice attachment and um, typically we would put this up into the animal yep. and this on the base. Um, I don't know, I guess we just have an aversion to not having a post coming out of a yep. piece of taxidermy work. If um, the customer wanted to do anything different, we could always fill a hole, but if he didn't want the post coming out, it'd make it it's harder. Hard to cut off. Um, yeah. Why don't you, you're awful good at this, tell them um, how you would select an attachment point. Oh, man. Um, it, that's pretty important. The attachment points are another, another really critical time in the planning process for your composition. So you're figuring out what all is happening. And um, it's nice to have, I think you probably pushed this on me long, long ago, is to hide that attachment and make it as inconspicuous as possible. I was looking for a word. Well, you listen um, real good, evidently. <laughs> <that's, laughs> um, um, no, but we, so we've put attachments in just about anywhere, but I think we try very hard to make our attachments not in the obvious place, not the first pr place that people look. So and they always, that's the first thing they do is look. They do look for attachments, and sometimes um, you can really... You can really fool people. Um, our northern is one of the ones that I like the very most, and that one, that one's hard to find. Um, that's a good one. Um, but for deer heads, um, stability is probably uh, for a customer piece that's going on a table with kids around in traffic. You won't really want to make sure that you're doing something that that is friendly to the environment for the home and isn't gonna get knocked over. Um, we've done some big tall pedestals. And a lot of times we'll, we'll shoot for the shoulder. Um, most times people look for the brisket, but um, we'll put it off on the shoulder. I think the blast bucks we did um, mm -hmm. not too long ago had, were both shoulder attachments and those were kind of- I think they were on the beginning of nice. the intro too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so choosing an, an attachment, you've got to have a place that you have strength in your mannequin. Um, I've seen some some people go through um, the foreleg. Um, brisket's pretty common. Um, back of the shoulder, if they're if they're turned hard or or back, I've even seen some pretty crazy ones with deer rubbing on fence posts and they're mm -hmm. actually attached by their forehead. But um, we've I seen think, uh, we've seen animals licking out of a stream attached yeah. to their tongue. Uh, attach, yep, that's actually, we've um, seen if, that you a few times. A, if you go to a show, you're going to see, um, I'd say 90% of them attached like a post through the brisket yep. or a yep. pheasant flying with a corn stalk right, <laughs> in, his right chest. in the middle of his chest.
Um, I think one of our, I think you'd have to have something made, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of jumped ahead with the positioning here. This is another one. We just go up to the welder, and yeah. um, this is a steel plate and a steel rod. Yeah. And we have another steel rod that's going to go up into the animal with the female tube. And this will slide right down onto our base. Get it lined up right. Like that. So you're going to want something, a half mount white tail. This maybe would want to be a little bit heavier, I think. Depending upon where he was going to attach, if he was attached by a foot, um, you'd probably want something pretty stout. If he was laying down and the half and in if he's body jumping and, just, and leaning way out, yeah. um, it's going to be a lot of stress on this. A whole bunch, yeah. So something along these lines, but we'd have to think about learned a little more like yeah. you're going to say yeah um, but this is a real easy one and when we go up there um, we'll show them what we want to the weld shop maybe make a little sketch this is nothing more than a rod welded into a square tube that indexes onto here the rod goes down um, or oh, in maybe an inch so that when we stick it on it bottoms out so it can only go so far this one we wanted so that we had a little bit of distance so we can have um, habitat or a little chunk of log or anything so the um, this is going to be for a deer so the deer doesn't you know bottom out on the dirt so it looks like he's rubbing his brisket in the dirt and then um, like we said earlier we usually put this up into the animal and because we're going to put this in the animal and we'll show you we have a pedestal to do we'll show you um, you took a, a steel saw blade oh, yeah. for cutting steel yeah. and you just ran it back and forth back and forth because we're going to put this up into that foam form and we need something that it's going to grip to rather than smooth steel so um, we either put them in with auto body putty or 10 pound foam works really well yeah. Yeah. and um, so that will be up in the animal really really secure and he's going to be balanced on here. And now you could do, this tube must be not entirely square. Um, and you can do the same identical thing with heavier, like maybe like this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like these, um, these pedestal rods, this is a softer threaded steel rod. And you can bend it up real easily which would be bad for a half-life size whitetail. You get him all set up, slide him on, and he'd be like the steer, and he'd start laying down. Yeah. So you're going to want something very, very strong. Um, now, what is the purpose of the additional part here versus just the sleeve? I think just leverage to um, me. Yeah. Something that goes up. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> you got to give me the That's answers <laughs> to these quizzes. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll drill the hole in, and so that'll take up the whole shoulder. If you had a small little sleeve in there, which would work, it wouldn't take much to bust yeah. it out yeah. of that foam. Yeah. The longer you go, the stronger it's going to be. Yeah. So we take this even a little bit farther and make, here's an example. Can you get a look at this one? This might be better suited for a... Shall we lift it? Okay, want to lift him up? Sure. This would be better suited for a half life size deer. Um, same procedure as this. Same, everything's the same, but here is a much stronger piece of steel. And that will go up inside of the animal. It'll slide down on here. There's going to be habitat here. There's going to be a, a chunk of um, log that attaches there. You can put your animal skull in here and lots of weeds. Um, do you want to show them that that comes out? Here, I'll get this out of your way and we can... Like that? Yeah. And then I can get this. Now eventually, this is gonna... That's probably what you meant in the first place, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, I was just... Yeah, I thought I'd get this out of your way um, and then you can show them. But uh, eventually this will get attached down in. And all we did, this is just a hexagon that we made, just cut it, put it on with a piece of plywood underneath, doubled plywood because we bolted down through it so it's nice and strong. Um, 
This is going to go up into animal. This is going to stay on the base. This will all get camouflaged. You're not going to see any of this by the time we get creatively done. Yeah. And, so the uh, base of the animal will be right here. Yep. Yeah. And you can you could put it down to here too. You could uh, you know use a sleeve. You can have use just a rod like this. You can have it slide all, all the way, the way down. down. Sure. And um, the one the littler ones we had were actually quite long. Um, which were going to come out the back of our deer. So before showtime, Brett just took the sawzall and cut off about three inches of our, our rod. Yeah. Uh, there's one of the original yeah. starts back there. Otherwise, the long one you can use for a snake that's going straight <laughs> up. Depends on the pedestal. Um, you're gonna have, you know, two rods is always harder to hide than one. Mm -hmm. um, two rods, people are gonna go, oh, that's how they did that without searching. Yep. Um, I would way rather go with one, but it all depends on what you're trying to do. And and we'll, we have another even heavier version of one that we can show you. That show them that. The that's hard a... part about two rods is they have to be perfectly parallel. If they're not perfectly parallel, your animal won't go down. You'll have, it will bind and you'll have a lot of trouble. So um, this is what we did with, um, we've done some big critters on this. Um, elk, uh, what else did we do um, with the big one? We do the um, sable with the big one, or that might have been a small one. Um, probably, we've done a lot of big, big creatures. Um, we've done, Cape buffalo pedestals, and yeah. a cape buffalo yeah. alone weighs, I mean, the head has to weigh when it's done 60 pounds-ish, oh, maybe yeah. more, yeah. maybe yeah. 70. Um, we have a uh, um, big full-shoulder pedestal moose coming up yeah. with exceptionally large antlers, and those antlers already weigh 40-plus pounds, and they're going to be, like you said, cantilevered out, if you attach them on the brisket, are going to be cantilevered out this yeah. far, which multiplies how much weight is yeah. on that post. Yeah. So it's going to take something like this. <clears throat> Animals like that we will probably do. You don't have to, but we'll probably do a brisket mount. If you're going to do a, a hidden attachment like off of the shoulder, um, like you were talking about, that's very involved and you're going to have so much time involved in it. You might make it come out really, really nice, but you're going to think, wow, I really lost my <laughs> yeah. rear on that because yeah. you know you have three weeks trying to figure this out yeah. and you did it. Um, so some of these elaborate ones, there's a ton of time, you yeah. know, trying to think. And, and some material expenses. That's not inexpensive. That piece there. I don't even want to tell you. Um, we talked about round versus square. That looks round to me. And the problem with round is, um, we you get an elk, for instance, that has a three foot long neck, and here you have a round sleeve, you have a round post inside of it, fastened at the base, and some little kid comes up and pushes the elk's face one direction, and all of a sudden it goes over and it tips over because it's off center now. Um, so to circumvent that disaster, um, we have our welder cut a notch in here and in the post, I don't know if you can see it, but in the post, or in the, in the tube, there is a post that goes right across, right where you see these little shiny spots. There's a little pin that goes through, which indexes into that channel. So this is in the animal. You put the animal in after he's all done, or on the form, and you put it down, and then you twist it, till it drops in, and now it can't turn. Genius, huh? It is, I really like that. Uh, and you could do it with any, it doesn't have to be anything this big, it could be any kind of sure. little tube. Round tube is easier to find um, outsides and insides for than, than square tubing, and um, that little pin up there works really, really well. Just make sure when you put this into the form and you're getting everything all set up, that it's indexed like that, 
Yep. So you yep. don't have to move anything. You could do it, I guess, and then. Um, and then you could. Yep. Yeah. Um, right. But that's one of our big ones, and we would use that on um, big pedestals. Yep. Uh, would pallet wood work for the half body mount? For a pedestal base, I'm guessing. Yes. Sure. I think um, I think the the big important thing to those um, where did you oh, this is the right one um, the important thing other than your base or your pretty part is this yeah. you know as long as this is nice and nice and sturdy if you have a one or two three quarter inch plywoods you know on that this is attached to it should sit just fine and your pallet wood is only going to be something that this sets in decorative that sets yeah. it up yeah um this incidentally the piece that goes along with that is just old barn wood that's three quarter inch barn wood that oh it was um, wasn't it um it's it's very pretty um the structure is all the engineering that you talked about earlier is in that other piece <clears throat> it's in the the attachment but that goes back to planning and planning is just I can't emphasize how important the pre-planning is for these things. Sometimes you get so far into them and you think, oh my gosh, I wish I would have. And you hope you don't have to go backwards. And when you talk about uh, pallet wood, will it work? Um, many projects we've got halfway through and thought, this isn't going to work. We got to yeah. back, you have to back up and start again. You yeah. know, um, we do that every day. Your structure gets a little stronger, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bigger. You and, know, you're going to yeah. have them build something and and your pedestal is going to go like that. Yeah. Well, hopefully you didn't put it together yet yeah. and you still have time. Um, over engineering is usually not a bad thing. And hiding, hiding your attachments, just always keep that in mind that you have to hide your attachment. Yeah. Um, it was interesting many, many, many years ago, I had a game warden bring in a canvas back. I think you've heard this story. Oh. And he envisioned it flying over water with some bulrushes and things. So I took, <clears throat> I took the, a really nice walnut base and I used bulrushes, wire bulrushes. I made all these and I sanded them for hours on the sander and I painted them real pretty and I bent them all that the wind was blowing them. And I was pretty proud of these bulrushes and two or three of them went up into the bird. And uh, he, I had them in the lunchroom table and he came in and he walked around it and finally he said, okay, tell me how you did it. And I thought, I thought it's not, I mean, they're very obvious to me because I did it, but canvas back was just cruising over the bulrushes. And That's anytime it. somebody has to look to try to figure it out, you did good. Yeah, yep. <coughs> yep, for sure. Okay, now that you've decided what to do and what kind of steel do you, there's plastic pedestal attachments too oh, sure. also yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, there's some great um, look and breakthrough there's some great um, plastic yeah. pedestal attachments yeah. that Tony mm -hmm. yeah. from Africa yeah. Yeah. Um, and they um, are easy to insert they're very very strong they don't um, you think of plastic as not being very durable they're exceptionally exceptionally yeah. sturdy yeah. and they use them on some big creatures uh, okay, now, talking about pedestals, customer comes in, he wants a pedestal, he wants a semi-sneak, doing this, doing that, and you quote him a price, and he leaves, and you go to the catalog, and nobody's got it. They don't have the size. So now what do you do? <laughs> now, now, we... We do this every day. We don't even think twice about it. We usually don't even look for a pedestal form because they're so hard to We're come by. We're not gonna find one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, it's time to start altering and changing and turning. And, and um, really when you, get, when you get comfortable with doing that, it becomes second nature and it's not anything that we, that we think too much about. But um, we usually order by size make sure that our size matches. Um, we'll get as close as we can pose-wise to a start, and we'll just start with a shoulder form like this, and we'll add the nice sculpted back. Um, rather than order it, we have lots of flexibility. We can make this three feet long if we need to. And we or, just did that just, yeah, this week. Um, um, on some fun pieces. Mm -hmm. um, 
or we can keep it pretty small depending upon how much tape you have. It's a good idea to, um, you, you get your form. Um, the first thing I think we like to do is test fit. We did that yesterday um, to make sure that we don't make a whole bunch that of alterations. That is important. We learned that the hard way <laughs> yep. many, many years ago. Yep. Um, easy to make a whole bunch of alterations and get excited and, and go to a whole bunch of work only to find out, oh my gosh, I don't know if my skin fits. And then we're either altering for size or sanding it or making it bigger. But um, get your form, test fit it, and then um, kind of let your creative juices flow. If you're going to start this way, another, another thing that they can do is we're, we're going to add to the back. And rather than just extend, we want to have the flexibility to move the shoulder line in a little bit. Um, we're going to go without, we're going to take the and back. And you don't want to off. be sanding and grinding plywood. Yep. Yep, so that's a, that's a pain, so we'll get that out of the way. But if you know you're going to do that, um, don't be afraid to ask your supply companies to pour you one without the back. Why didn't we do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> we should have. I bet we just took it off the shelf. Okay, um, so we're going to take a sawzall now, and we're just going to run it right along that backboard and cut the backboard out, which if we'd have told our supplier <laughs> we need it without a blackboard, we would have got it that way, but we didn't. Um, so we're going to cut that off to start with. And then we'll put him on a stand and foam the back. Yep. And I think and, we can get that done yet. And without, without a place to screw to, um, we're going to use a little bit different method to attach him to a stand. And that's going to be um, a Something pedestal like attachment. Yeah. Just a skewer. We're going to skewer him right on there. We'll do that in just a second. Um, want me to hold him? Want to cut? Jay, do you want to turn down your volume so we don't... <laughs> I don't know if you can. It's got two, two bars, two bars. That's pretty clean. You did good, didn't I? You did good. <laughs> nice and straight. They don't always come out that straight. No. All right. Oh. Do we want to put this goes on the belly, was it? Um, I think we were going to do it on the side. side. Okay, got yeah. it. You got marked I think it. We were going to do it on the side, about like this. Good? Oh, yeah. I'll just give them a push. Okay. Ready? About there. And then something that is very helpful that 
we use a lot is surgical tubing, I think it's called. Yep. And as you're working on these, they're going to want to wiggle loose. Um, with surgical tubing, it'll keep them from falling on the floor. like having an extra hand in the shop. We couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't operate without my little tubing. And then make sure it's not gonna unwind on you. We just wrap it around something and kind of tie it to itself. Good? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, now let's expose this to the top. <clears throat> I'll square it up just a little bit. And now, if you pour foam on here, it's all going to run off. Mm -hmm. So, we cut some, this is our thin carding material in a large sheet. And if we were to wrap it around here, um, it's gonna contain our foam for us. Um, do we wanna put a few oh, yeah, do that. things in the back? Do that. Or let's Tell them what you're doing here too, this is a good idea. Um, so just to give <clears throat> this a, uh, this is a, foamy surface now and it's all slick from being cut because you did such a nice job cutting it. Um, now, just to give the foam something to bite to, we will knock some dings and dents in it. I'll turn it for you to see. Um, we're just gonna put some dents in it like that. You can do as much of that as you want to. That should be enough to get you going. Okay, hold that yep. there. It's going to be a little short. And you're just using T pins? Just T pins. And you can staple if you want to. Anything to hold this plastic. Um, tight to the form so you don't waste a lot of plastic. Can you get yep. me in that corner yet? It's going to work? Mm -hmm. I'm going to move this one. Right. right there. Right there. And we're just trying to create a dam to keep our foam from from going too far. And you can use um, cardboard. You can use tape. Any kind of stuff like that. Publisher's clearing house. I guess so. Okay. If I had another little piece. Let me see if I can round one up. And so we'll put, we'll pour that with foam, um, just like our mannequin foam, just like the deer is made out of. We'll use our three pound density foam for this. Um, but we have two different foams. Should we tell them about that? Sure. 
Um, we have 10 pound density foam, which we often refer to as structural foam. It's still a, a two part foam, um, looks exactly the same in the bottle, but you'll notice it's labeled structural um, and, we, and we sell it that way. 10 pound density foam is really strong and we could put our pedestal attachment in with that foam. Um, we could foam it into place with that, and that's nice and strong. I don't, we may or may not, depending, but um, it foams a little bit. The difference is three pound density foam foams a whole bunch more, and so we've had calls several times over the last, oh, several months for um, foam that they order foam and it doesn't foam as much as they thought it might. Um, that's because they ordered the 10 pound foam, and 10 pound foam. Um, that's measured by the cubic foot, is that right? Um, yes. Of one yep. cubic yep. foot. Yep. Yep. So if you had a cubic foot of three pound foam, that cubic foot would weigh approximately three pounds. Um, so it's going to be light. There's going to be a lot of air in it. That's what our mannequins are. Um, they don't have to be really dense. The, the leather itself is um, the foam only has to support the leather. But if we were to do something with the 10 pound foam, now all of a sudden that one foot cube weighs 10 pounds, lots less air in it, lots more foam. Um, so it's, it's much stronger. How, what would you compare it to? Pine. Yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, I mean, we use it, we literally use it to foam in the big, heavy rods in an elk or Cape Buffalo. I mean, it's strong. You, um, some of our driftwood and our rocks and things like that are made with, with the heavy, heavy yeah. structural foam. Um, so it's going to foam. Because of that, it's going to create a lot less material, less foam. So when it's finished, and I'll mix up a little bit of the 10 pound and just pour it, pour it out here for you. And then we'll mix up some of the three pound and pour that for you just to see the difference. Um, so here's what we got so far. Um, this is nothing more than a plastic dam. We're gonna pour foam in here and we want that foam to go all the way to the edges. We really wanna build up the dorsal part of his back as well as his brisket because we'll do a nice artistic scalloped, you know, concave surface in there that we can rasp and make real nice. You've seen people do rock formations in the back. You've seen them do scenes. I've seen uh, this hollowed out and baby skunks in there. You know, you see all kinds of creative people. But um, so we just want an extension on here, something we can work with. Now, <clears throat> also, you notice that we cut the backboard off. There's nothing to fasten this to a mounting stand and we can't mount him very well with these skewers in here. So once we shape our back, get it looking exactly like we want it, we'll take a three quarter inch piece of plywood, we will trace around it in our nice pretty back that we spent so much time shaping, then we will take a Dremel and we will sink down so that three quarter inch plywood will go down under the surface a little ways, and then we will re-foam over it and rasp off the excess, now we can put a mounting stand on it yep. and mount him that way. Yep. Um, one other thing I thought of while you were, while you were putting this on, um, you mentioned that they could use cardboard or anything else. It doesn't hurt to use a release. Nice to use a, <clears throat> a mold release. A paste wax works really good on cardboard. Um, or it says sun kissed or, across there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it peels off really hard. Um, another, a lot of people use duct tape. Duct tape yeah. will work real yeah. good too. Yeah. Um, and if you put a little wax on it or mold release, it won't won't stick as bad. Yeah. Do you want to pour that? Sure. Um, Were you showing them an experiment or something? Did I was hear? just starting to pour the th pour the ten pound. But do you want to pour the three? I'll mix the ten at the same time, and they can see how different the ex the expansion is. Okay. Um, I'll get you a battery quick. This is your three. And that's, so you're going to whip that with the drill. That's kind of a nice. I have a little bent 
drill. <laughs> so <laughs> if it gets away from you, it'll throw foam all over. <clears throat> you can do the, you can mix it with a stick or you can mix it with um, uh, whip stick or a lot of times we'll just take a wire and we'll put a loop on the end of it and a little bit of duct tape to hold it there. And then Hand I'm me just one of your use, sticks there too. I'm just going to use Thank you. Um, equal parts. I'm not going to mix near as much because I'm just going to pour this out on a plate. But this is the 10 pound foam. And I am mixing, I don't know, this is a seven ounce cup, I think. I'm mixing about half of that equal parts of A and B. And I will mix that up and just pour it on this plate. And you'll see how much or how little it makes. Now you have some time. When you pour it in here, um, you've got a few minutes yeah. before it's going to foam, and it will never foam very well until you um, mix it with a beater or a stick like you're doing. Now foam, like all products, um, is getting more and more and more expensive. Um, so when you quote somebody for a pedestal and you're going to have to make it yourself, you're going to mm -hmm. add many dollars worth of foam. Yep, foam is going up. Um, foam, like any of these two-part reactions, you'll feel heat. If you're mixing it in a cup and your hands are, and you're touching it, you'll notice it starts to get warm. Um, I'm not going to pour this just yet, but is yours getting warm? I'm getting warm, yep. I'm going to pour it. It's starting to come up in my cup. Um, and any time you're pouring something um, into an area like Tom has there, there's a few little voids. It's nice to let it foam in the cup a little bit so that it doesn't want to run all down in the, in the voids or cracks or gaps. Um, this is just starting to go. Um, I'm going to pour it out here on this plate, and you'll see what you'll see what that does. This again is the 10-pound structural foam. I would tip it so you could see it better, but I might spill it. And it's nice to pour enough foam that you can carve rather than have four or five different mixes added on top of each other back and forth. Now, I guess if I had to guess, I would say three pound foam will probably expand four times or five times the volume. So, yeah. so if, I had, if I had this full of three pound foam, I'm going to say it would end up with four to five's worth yeah, when it's hardened. I don't think so. Um, and for yours, I would say um, maybe one and a half's worth. It's, it's, it's not half, a great yeah. foamer. Yeah, you'll see I had a, about this much, and I can set that on there maybe three or four times to get about that high the most. Um, so this is um, foaming pretty nice. I think you're going to have... <clears throat> enough to sculpt in here a little bit mm -hmm. and give him some really nice artsy back. Um, then we'll uh, sink down a board. Yeah. And I'm sure that's, we maybe get to pull this off yet today, but after that, it's going we'll to be next week, drill. I think. Yeah, we'll drill a pedestal hole in him. And oh, you might on. be doing this by yourself next week. I think so. <laughs> I think so. There's a storm coming, isn't there? I got to go to Mickey, <laughs> see Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Um, the Florida storm, the Mickey Mouse storm. Um, but yeah, this, this is how we would set up just about anything. You mentioned that we did it earlier this week. We did um, a half life size bush buck and a half life size in Yala pedestal exactly the same way. Um, they're yeah. going to attach to the wall. They're going to be wall pedestals. Big kudu, kudu pedestal, yep. Yep. which and will go on that, that base. Yeah. Um, but we do that for everything. It doesn't, um, once you've done one or two, um, your mind will start going and you'll start doing more and more and more. And when a customer comes in and wants something like this, it doesn't throw you for a loop because you have that experience. And then you will just get 
more creative and more creative. <clears throat> and you can attach, like you're talking about attachments, you can attach them um, by antlers, you can attach them by, you know, rubbing on a tree. We've seen everything. If you go to the taxidermy shows, you'll see um, people doing crazy, crazy engineering yeah. feats with um, yeah. attachments. It's kind of fun yeah. to see. I think the one I remember the very most is Mike Mikowski's wood ducks, the two wood ducks that are attached by their wingtips. Um, I mean, it's, I don't know if I want to pull my pins out yet. I can kind of go slow and start at it, but we pull these pins out and because this um, plastic doesn't stick to the foam very much, um, once this is hardened, it'll peel right off. You can use the plastic over and over and over. I think Craig's elk had a great big pedestal rod like that in it too, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Have to use one of those. Uh, Craig is doing some great work <laughs> down under. Yes, that's the good morning part of, of that. And then Holly says, great job, guys. Okay, Eagle Wolf says, another great video. Looking forward to the next one. I um, mean, we'll just keep, uh, I think we're going to have to finish this before. We've got a couple of them to do. They might see us switch. Um, switch gears on this year, but uh, we do have another one that's at right about the same stage that we can drill a hole in and put a pedestal rod in um, for you next Thursday. Um, and do we have anything that we were oh gosh to give away? Here, before you go, Mandy's going to want us to show you the new stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for reminding me. Uh, Make sure my hands are clean. <laughs> uh, Mandy, in conjunction with I'm gonna show you, Dan Brips and Mandy. Dan Brips is one of the most accomplished wildlife photographers we know, um, and she puts together these books with with his pictures. And we have, this one is um, water scenes, whole lot of splashes. You people want to do fancy things for competitions. <clears throat> Look at some of the splash scenes. It's beautiful. <laughs> they are. How long do you have to sit and wait for this? Oh my gosh. I'd run out of sandwiches. <laughs> um, the flying bird one. Yeah, that's amazing. That's just amazing. Oh, let me show you the best picture of the whole thing. Look at that baby. Is that not neat? That's a real pheasant. That's not that a, is, that's not that's not a fancy okay. you know, image that somebody came up with. Look at this. You pheasant people, I want to see it. Look at that. Yeah, that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, the whole book, I don't know how many pages. There's a dozen or so pages of pictures like that. Um, wow. Wing formations. Yeah, those are wonderful. Um, we have wood ducks, we have flying birds, we have mallards. Um, now those are the painting. Oh, this is a painting one. Painting a wood duck bill. This is by Corey and Dan Ripps. Um, Mandy put it together. It's got an anatomy diagram in the front, picture of a live bird, um, and this is Corey's instruction on painting. And it goes step by step by step in color, one color after another color after another color. And when you're done, that's what you're going to have. Yeah, those are fantastic. Um, these are the best. I mean, yeah. if you have trouble painting a uh, wood duck bill or a um, pintail bills are tough for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're fabulous. Mallard, same thing. Yeah. Pictures of... Uh, I don't want to get foam all over these things. Pictures of uh, the living mallard starting out with a starting out with a white wildlife illusions bird head, of course, and the different color after color after color.
great, great books. Painting a pintail, painting a mallard, painting a wood duck, um, painting a ringneck pheasant beak. They're just great. So that's new. Hot we off the press. Supposed to tell you, yeah. <laughs> and our giveaway, are we ready for giveaway? You, the winner gets a pedestal rod attachment, brand new in a bag, not one that I've taken <laughs> out. <clears throat> pedestal rod attachment. Um, I gave you the medium. This, these come in a small, medium, and large, I believe. I so. um, the small would be for maybe a smaller head. Um, the big ones maybe would hold an elkish if it's balanced yeah. good. Um, all you got to do is like and share, like and share, like and share. And who wins it? Brendan, congratulations. Mm -hmm. With your next order, you are going to get your pedestal rod attachment. Okay. That it? That's it. Okay, this is as far as we got today. Um, and we'll pick it up on a, either this one or a different one the next, yeah. next yep. time. We have another, another one to do.